And welcome to another live Procreate workshop. I'm here with the lovely Abby from Uproot Brushes. And Hi. today we have a uh, very exciting 3D lettering, crafty textile style project for you. Um, we are going to be utilizing, as you can see, in, oh, wrong side, in the uh, <laughs> upper left corner. Um, it's like flipped, so it's always hard to tell which side I need to point <laughs> at, but. We're going to be using the Whip Stitch Craft Kit. There are a pack of free brushes that Abby has super generously provided to us that has um, all sorts of goodies that we'll get into as we use them. So you can use that today to follow along. I've also used, I've also linked the font that Abby will be using in the description below. Feel free to ask questions as we go. We like to try to keep this nice and interactive and we will catch all of the ones that we can. Shall we get oh. into it? <laughs> yeah. All right. Hey, so this morning we're going to be using one of my favorite brush packs I've ever made, but it uh, a lot of people have never even heard of it because I think I was on a bit of a uh, low key when I released it, so I wasn't showing people a lot of stuff. <laughs> so it's called the Whip Stitch Craft Kit, and it's the set of brushes that makes all sorts of crafty looking things but instantly so for example there's chains you can just grab a goldish color and when you draw with it it produces a chain instantly that isn't see-through and you don't need to fill in the background with something else it's just already done for you and that makes it super easy yeah. So explain to us what makes that special. You've create, you've developed this technique to have the like multi layers of, of highlights and, and shadows. Yeah. Right? So, so in a normal brush, um, everything is, it's usually see-through. So for example, if you, if you had a brush that made a chain, everywhere where you see white on that chain would be see-through. So you'd have to actually create a mask to go behind it and block out the background if you wanted that chain to look like it was a chain by itself on top of something else. But I figured out a sneaky way to sort that out for you so you don't have to worry. So you can end up with brushes like uh, these pearls. It's just grab this light pink. And it's instantly pearls. You don't need to. Yeah. Um, and this is on the same layer as the chains, just goes straight over the top, doesn't show through. Anyway. Yeah, I think that's the biggest um, immediate difference that you see is that you can layer them and yeah. there's no transparency there. There's also some super funky um, shiny beads that have a tiny bit of transparency because beads are a little bit see-through but they oh, yeah. are a little bit blingy and fun as well. So um, those are also really cool. I love this. This just looks like like um, costume jewelry that I would always go through at my grandma's house. Like she had jewelry boxes full of, of those. I feel like especially like vintage jewelry, you see everything's like big and like, yeah. like big baubles, you know? <laughs> my granny had exactly the same kind of stuff. That's so weird. <laughs> Also, like, and like earrings that were shaped like enormous daisies, but they were just massive oh. plastic things. I never and actually saw probably... her wear, wear them. I think that she maybe just had them there for us to play with. And they were oh. all clip-on. I don't know how people wore yes. clip-on earrings in the olden days. That, that Like the pain, unbearable. They are so uncomfortable, <laughs> especially <Yeah. laughs> like if they're strong enough to stay on. <laughs> yeah. That's what makes them brutal really painful yeah okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the background and i'm just gonna make a background that looks like a piece of fabric so let's just choose cotton twill and i'm gonna pick white and just fill in the whole layer with this cotton twill i might actually want to make the grain a little bit smaller and you can do that by using the size slider. You can see the cotton tool oh, yeah. fabric there. And now I actually want to make a pattern behind it that looks groovy and, you know, um, like a olden day 60s fabric. So I'm going to set my cotton 
layer to multiply so that whatever I put behind is going to show through. And then in the freebies in this pack here, I've made these brushes that um, are pattern brushes, but each color of the pattern is a separate brush. And if you leave your, um, your canvas in the same orientation, they'll always line up and be the same pattern. So I'll show you here. Uh, we'll use this one for the background. And you see the notches that show the sizes. As long as yeah. your size is the same in all the brushes as you go, your pattern will line up properly. So let's make it on the smallest. Just... Let's well, let's maybe make it second smallest so I don't have to paint so much. And you can lift your brush if you forget where you are and go back and it will always be in the same place as it was. Okay. The notches do... are just genius. They are. They're the best thing that Procreate's done a long time. Yeah. Let's do the leaves bit in this baby poo. This is, there's just like such instant gratification in this. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> and then let's do the flower middles in red. And that's, I see if I, if I change the size too big, it doesn't line up. So put it on the same size as its friends and it lines up perfectly. Oh, beautiful. I'm loving this color combination too. And then let's do it on this. Pink. There we go. Right. And now we've got this cool 60s fabric background. Um, and it's and, all perfectly aligned. You don't have to yeah. go on different layers. You don't have to nudge things. Yeah. And um, because when they print on fabric, it always has a little bit of a fuzziness. I like to just give my pattern layer a tiny bit of a Gaussian blur so that it looks like it actually is fabric because fabric doesn't really have super crisp images so i'm not gonna yeah. go like crazy but i'll do maybe two percent maybe one one percent should be enough yeah okay and then if i want to make the pattern go in a different direction i can just move oh the... i love that yeah okay right so we've got so, our background let's group that together like that and then we can hide it yep just a reminder for anybody following along live um those pattern brushes are part of the free brush set that abby has provided and that is linked in the description of the video so yeah whether you're following along or not definitely check <laughs> those out because they are yeah genius Okay, so let's start with some lettering. We'll add some text. Good old text. Um, let's make it dark green. So this font that I'm using is called that. I'm not going to pronounce it. It's too weird. But, <laughs> but that's it also is a, linked. <laughs> it's a free font, and I think it's free for commercial use too. And it's a really cute little font. So I'm just and that is also write. linked in the description, so you can. Check that out. The word too. yes. Let's make it a bit bigger. Oh. And maybe space those letters a bit so that my textures don't touch each other when I'm. That looks good. Okay, and I'm going to show you a different um, textile texture for each of the three letters. So what I want to do now is um, cut this word into bits. So let's rasterize it. And then when you have a whole lot of objects on one layer that you want to separate out, I found this easy way to do it uh, that makes it slightly less frustrating. <laughs> So what you want to do is select the letter that you want to cut out and invert the selection and cut out the rest. Oh. So that you don't have to go to the layers menu. You can just go straight back to cutting. 
the amount of time that this will save <laughs> and and just um error messages that this will save me yeah <laughs> Yeah, Where it, it tells you that you're on the wrong to, layer. Yeah, exactly. It took me a while to figure it out because I always end up cutting this out. And then without mm -hmm. going to the layers, I go and start selecting. And I'm selecting somewhere where, which is completely blank now, which yeah. is stupid. Okay. So we're going to do them one at a time. So we'll start with the Y. Make a couple of layers above the Y. Now I want the Y to be made out of carpet texture, which is... There's so many things here. Oh, there, carpet is just one up. And this is what the carpet texture looks like. That's pretty nice. But the easiest way to make it look like the Y, oops, I drew exactly out of it. The Y is made out of carpet is to give the edge of the Y this fuzzy, furry effect. So yeah. I'm going to grab this. So you reduce afraid and crazy edge yes i just reduced the opacity just so you can see it I'll, okay i'll do that in the next one and go around the edge of your letter it's super random this brush which is very nice which means you don't have to um try and be random which is difficult <laughs> yeah it's um when you do try to make something look not uniform, it tends to look it's, more yeah, consistent exactly. uniform. <laughs> and then the reverse as well is true. <laughs> I made a stippling brush set a while ago and I wanted to make a very random stippling texture. You'd think that was easy, but no. Just putting dots in a random place is not easy. Okay. So we've got our texture and we've got our edge. And now the texture is in a layer above. And I'm going to go clipping mask. And oh, let me turn brilliant. this light off if it's making a glare. And then you can see that it looks like carpet around the edge because we made that fuzzy edge for ourselves. And now to make this pop out in a 3D way, I make some more clipping mask layers, clipping, clipping. And I fill one of them with white and one of them with black. Uh, oh, it's Fine. knock of your tea. <laughs> yeah, nearly. <laughs> and then I want to select the letter layer, the one that's got the nice fuzzy edge, and I go to the two layers that I just created and make them both blue and take away the area that I selected. Okay, so now, now you have a cutout. Now I have a cutout. Now I'm going to Gaussian blur both of them. So roughly 9% and on the black one, roughly 9%. And I'm on the black one, and I want the shadow at the bottom. So I'm going to move the black up that way a little bit. And on the white one, I want the highlight on the top corner. Yeah. So I'm going to move the white one down to the right a little bit. And then you can see where I'm going with this. And the top one will set to overlay, and it gives it a nice bright edge. And the black one was set to linear burn, and we can drop the opacity. And suddenly we have this little tuft in yeah. the shape of a leg, and it looks really cool. It just pops so nicely. And then to finish it off, we'll make a little drop shadow. So to do that, I've selected the letter and filled with black in the layer below. And I'm going to Gaussian blur that, I don't know, a bit. And I can move it down. And drop the opacity. 70. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. Cupcake okay. Cottage Studio says that is so cool. I agree. Yeah. So we've got a Y. And now for the E, we'll make this one furry, like um, 
dog hair or bear feathers or whatever you call them. Okay, so in a layer above the E, I'm going to go and grab, let's choose, where is it? Furry. And I'm going to draw some fur in. And then I'm going to drop the opacity of that layer. So I can see where the fur is, but I can also see the letter behind it. So I don't want to make it too um, light that I can't see the texture of the fur. I want it to still be able to see the fur so I can see what I'm aiming for. And then in yeah. the freebies, I gave you a brush called Hairy Beast. This brush will allow me to make it look like the hair is coming off the shape of it, of the, the shape of the letter so that it looks like the letter is actually made of fur and not just a picture of fur. Yeah. So these are like applique style, right? As if you actually yeah. cut out the shape. Yes. So when the fur is coming in towards the shape, make it like a rounded thing so it looks like the fur is going inwards. And then when the fur is going out of the shape, send it off a little bit like that and you don't have to do every single edge just give it a little hint of hair bristling around it so this um is where i am prone to go overboard so how do you decide <laughs> how much is enough uh you just try to sure. follow as <laughs> as much as possible the natural yeah yeah because you stuff. i think if you go too much you'll lose the shape of your letter and then you won't it won't look so much like it's an e anymore it might just look like a furry hamster <laughs> yeah and this brush is pressure sensitive so when you press hard it'll make like a fat clump like this and then when you press softly It'll make a little wispy bit. Yeah, that's so useful. Um, it's always great when you have a brush that you don't have to bounce back and forth different sizes on the slider bar. Yeah, yeah, I like that too. Some people have their pressure curve set sort of to like super, um, I think that they press very, very hard on their screen. And it give it it kind of robs you of a bit of um, bandwidth of uh, pressure. Yeah, but I suppose um, if you don't have to make a hole in your iPad screen to <laughs> make it the pressure change, then you're winning. Yeah, or scratch your screen protector, or yeah, um, wear down your pencil nib. I feel like <laughs> I. I don't think I press super hard, but I do, I use a paper textured um, screen protector and I find uh, I either do wear down my nib or scratch my screen protector. Um, so maybe I am one of those hard, hard pressers. Which screen protector are you using? So right now I am using the Elecom, um, it's, the brand is Elecom and yeah. it's, um, it's a Japanese brand that I can only find on Amazon, but they uh, they have like a really rough one yeah. and then a smooth one. And I use the smooth one, but it is still that paper texture. Oh, okay. um, I tried it's paper a like, to and it was like drawing on sandpaper. It was dreadful. I So I really liked the feel of the paper like one, but yeah. I scratched it the first day <laughs> mm -hmm. so again it was that i was i guess i was pressing too hard i don't know and then any time that i used it afterward running my pencil over that scratched area just drove me nuts yeah that would have bothered me um, okay you can, so you can we, also see it yeah yeah you can yeah. so we've done our letter and now we're going to and, and i've made the opacity go back to 100 percent and I can make it a clipping mask. And now it looks like hairy letter E. Yeah. Um, can you um, make that layer 
transparent once more. Um, ben Tai Creation said, you try to follow the movement of, of the hair of the fur texture. So I was wondering if you could. Yes, that's um, exactly what I did. The, so. To show See, so the more. tuft of, this tuft of hair is coming out here. So I made a little tuft there. This tuft of hair also comes out there. And I just followed the sort of general pattern of the hair. I think the most important thing is not to go across a bunch of hairs because that will just look like a piece of stripy hair, which you don't yeah. want. You sort of follow the, the direction of where the hairs are going. Um, and okay. then you also, I, I think you had said that you have the set to smudge as well. That it doesn't, oh, yes. um, I didn't show it, that. So um let's turn this down again so this brush uh, the hairy beast brush if you make it on smudge you can actually um almost pull the um color from areas so if i'm here oh whoopsie i'm on the wrong layer if i'm here on the e i can pull out a piece of the e what i can also do is push in a piece in and that it direction and it doesn't, it doesn't have... leave like a sort of smear or residual yeah. pixel because i've really set it useful. so that you don't have to switch between eraser and pen you can just have it on smudge if you if that's your preferred way of working yeah i um when i was playing around with this brush i found that especially useful um just to like undo mistakes that i didn't want yeah. i could kind of like push it instead of having to switch or undo it was for sure and you can for that. you can sort of make some hairs thinner a little bit using this much um oh method. yeah okay so now we want to make this look super 3d as well sometimes with mm -hmm. some colors this fur brush looks a bit darker than i wanted to so if i'm on that furry layer i sometimes go to hue saturation and brightness and just up the brightness a tiny bit and that will sort that problem out for you. Okay, so we're gonna do the same as we did with the carpet one. Clipping mask, clipping mask, and we'll fill the top one with white, and we'll fill the bottom one with black. And then tap select on the letter, and then highlight the black and the white layer. Whoop, drop my pencil. Um, not the E, otherwise you'll drag your E out. Mm -hmm. And then we drag it out. So now we're left with the cutouts. And remember we go Gaussian blur on the top one. Gaussian blur <laughs> on the bottom one. And we want the black shadow to be at the bottom. So we pull the black layer, whoops. Pull the black layer up a little bit. Why do they sometimes hop around like that when you haven't really touched anything else? And then we're going to move the white layer that way because we want the highlight at the top right. Okay. And set the white layer to overlay and set the black layer to linear burn and drop the opacity. And the difference isn't huge, but it's definitely there. Let me turn those off. I'll turn them back on. Um, DTS Art said the E has a furry Grinch vibe. It definitely does. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. My favorite line from the Grinch movie is hate, 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 loathe entirely. He's standing at the top of the mountain and he's naming people and he's ripping them oh. out of the phone book and he goes, hate, 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 loathe entirely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's make a drop shadow for the E as well. So we select the E, fill the layer below with black, Gaussian blur, and then we'll and Catherine just, says, how am I going to remember all this? Well, we'll do all of the steps with the S as well. Um, yeah. And then you can so always watch the replay. 
Yeah, we're doing the same steps with each. Okay, and let's do the S. So it's exactly the same. We're going to go to the layer above, pick a new texture. This time I'm going to use Weird Shag. Go over the top and drop the opacity. Now you can see with this one, it's these little tendrils of what look like some kind of cotton knit shredded or something, which I really like. So I've given you guys this tiny monoline brush so that you can essentially do the exact same thing as we did with the hairy E. We're going to either make the little bits hang off the edge or not. Um, and then clipping mask the texture to that. So let's make it conform to the tendrils that are very obviously hanging off. Some of the tendrils you might want to make look like a bump because they might be coming in from the outside. Okay. Um, Bentai says, talking about smudge brushes, I so loved Abby's sorcery brushes. Oh, I'm not yeah. sure. I discontinued I... them because we had that update that allowed you to add color um, dynamics to a brush because I thought they would be redundant but in hindsight they're actually not they they still work well and I don't remember that pack it's probably one of the few of yours that I don't have um it was it was a smudge there were a whole lot of smudging brushes where what you would do is make a little color swatch and then use the smudge brush to drag the colors from the color swatch and do lettering with them. Okay. They were a little bit finicky to use as well. So I suppose I was getting um, tired of trying to um, explain <laughs> to people how to use them. Well, and there's, there's always um, updates that require either editing of past brushes or yeah. it does make them less useful, I guess. They kind of like fix things about the program. Yeah. Okay. So here you can see like that one. I wanted to just make it look like it was nipping into the edge. Let's make this one hang right off. So you'll notice that the little tendrils are a little bit lighter than the rest. So sort of keep your eyes peeled for lighter bits and just finesse them into the spot where you think they make sense. Okay. Um, Diane says, it seems that you, Abby, have put out at least a thousand brushes. <laughs> None <laughs> of us can keep up. I make brushes every day just because I think up stuff and I want to see if it would work, etc. I have yeah. zillions of brushes just sitting in packs un unreleased okay so i think we've got enough tendrils hanging off and then let's clipping mask it to the thing that looks pretty cool and let's do the light and shade bit again clipping mask clipping mask Fill the top one with white. Fill the bottom one with black. And select your letter. Highlight your two um, shade and light layers, not the letter. And drag out your letter so you've got a cutout. And then Gaussian blur them both. If you're on a much bigger canvas, you might need to Gaussian blur more. And if you're on a smaller canvas, you might need to Gaussian blur less. So just use your discretion about how much of the white you see creeping in on the edges as you Gaussian blur it. Yeah. So here you can see the light bit has creeped in about that much. That's that's all you need. Okay. And I suppose if, if you were struggling to tell when it was... Um set as a clipping mask you could nudge it first 
Yes. And then yeah, yeah. and then blur if that's an easier way to tell. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Whoops, let's nudge the dark layer up. Whoop, stop being annoying. Nudge the dark layer up a bit because we want the shadow at the bottom. Nudge the light layer down a bit because we want the highlight at the top. Set the top one to overlay, the light one I mean to overlay, and the dark one to linear burn and drop the opacity. That looks pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. Let's give that one a drop shadow as well. That looks good. It looks amazing. Did I put it on 70%? I can't remember. Okay. So let's turn on our. So now we have this, these groovy letters over this crazy background. Um, and then when things don't look like they're actually in the same place at the same time, it sometimes is pretty jarring like this. This looks like I've taken some random textures and just pop them over the top of a pattern. I mean, it doesn't look it doesn't look like these are on a piece of fabric in real life. So what you want to yeah. do is create lighting that's going to make it all be in the same place. Okay. And the way that I do that is I pick a sort of peachy, pinky color. And I grab the soft brush from the Procreate um, default brushes. I've got it uh, from in the my, airbrush um, panel, right? Yes, I've got it in my quick menu. I love quick menu. Yes. Um, and I make a light bit in the light corner. So I've decided in this one that the top right, a left, is going to be my light. And in all of them, I've put the light on that side. So I'm going to mm -hmm. put the light in that corner. And then I always grab this color. I go Zook to the blue, and then I go somewhere here-ish. OK. And then I put a bit of blue at the bottom. Hang on, maybe that's too much. And then that layer, I Gaussian blur that 100%. So you left with this sort of like um, looks like there's been a bit of a photo blur going on. Yeah, and, and I I want to note too, it's really clever what you did leaving this space between the two colors when you drew them because then when you blurred it, you have the more transparent center, yeah. which, which isn't going to be affected by the yeah. two. And then you set that to overlay and drop the opacity. Maybe 50%. That this makes e is such looking, a huge difference. This E is not looking, um, what's the right word, saturated enough. Let's just go back and find that um, fur brush. That's actually not so bad when it's dark. Okay. Yeah. So that yeah. and that's how you make it all look like it's in the same place at the same time. That looks and so then, good. If you want to, you can add other things to your picture, like um, you can add a pair of scissors. <laughs> so it's grab gold. Oh, hang on. Let's make them big. And then to make the to make the gold really pop. You put it on color burn and then oh, yeah. it looks very gold. So let's give that a bit of a drop shadow as well. Maybe move them somewhere so they're not super in the way. And this composition is not coming together, but you get what I'm getting at. <laughs> I get the aim. It's 
So there's those, or you can add some safety pins. Let's get some safety pins. We'll put them this way. And those you can also make them really pop like that. Or if you prefer them darker, you can linear bend yeah. them. Um, oops, where was I? And give them a drop shadow. There you go. So it's a Brilliant. super versatile brush set with lots of cool things that you can create use to create 3D shapes and lettering and um, sort of make your lettering pop. Um, yeah, yeah, let me let me share my screen here. Um, switch to my files app here. So I wanted to quick, since you're talking about everything that this kit includes, um, this is a quick start brush guide that comes with the brush set that um, has this amazing table of contents. So if <laughs> you want to just like have a reference of what is in the brush pack, this is a great companion, um, especially for some of the textures because of the way the brushes are built. There's not a preview in the, yeah. um, in the file, but this allows yeah. you to see all of them at a glance, which is really helpful. But then there's also, Abby included, um, instructions specific to certain colors and different techniques that you can use to just up the realism. Um, this is just like so amazingly helpful. <laughs> and like, look at these. Oh my gosh, this is adorable. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen that yet. That's yeah, that so um, that little guy with the googly eyes, he was made using the same technique I just showed you for the E. So I took yeah. the, the hairy brush and I dragged out some of those. Whoops, your camera's having a moment. I'm back. Dragged out <laughs> some of those bits so that it looked like he was actually made out of that fur. Yeah, I love what you did with it, like even putting the bits over his eyes. It's so cute. He's so shaggy. <laughs> Um, loading, loading. So this is what I also wanted to show is you have this whole other section that we probably won't have time to get into today, but we can show you what you can do with this set. You can create intarsia or jacquard style lettering and patterns on, um, one of the knit textures. And this is just oh, like, yeah. so good. I am a, I'm a sweater person and a knitter. So I love this to bits. This is much easier end, than I always end up making pieces at Christmas with those yes. um, brushes to make like really dorky jumper looking stuff. Yeah, I love the ugly sweater stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Except that I I don't think any sweater is truly ugly. It just might not be your <laughs> taste, but I'll, all sweaters are beautiful. <laughs> um, and then I can pop and show you. A couple things here with the safety pin. Something that I really like to do is, um, in addition to Abby's lighting technique over the top of everything, to help um, make things look in like uh, cohesive, I guess, all together. Um, for adding safety pins here, all I did was, um, after I'd positioned them, I added a layer mask and then removed the bit that would be. Um, pressed through the fabric so that's not visible. The nice thing about that is that I can always change it if I don't like it. You can always, you can erase if you um, are Can you confident. do one? Can you do one for us? Because that is oh, really sure. cool. That's a really cool technique. Yeah. So just add a new layer. Let's go somewhere that it won't get confusing. Do an open safety pin. Um, 
dark gray. I'll do your technique of duplicating it. That's super clever. Ooh, yeah, I like that black. Okay, so then I have a layer below that keeps turning into a clipping mask. Um, and then on, on the safety pin layer, let's see, let's reposition this. So I'm gonna transform. And then to get to add a layer mask, I'm tapping on the layer and then selecting mask there and then making sure that I'm selected on the layer mask layer, not the pin layer itself. And then from here, I can just erase. And you'd want to do that on the open side, so the sharp point side. And then on the layer below it, I am going to switch to the soft brush, um, which is in the airbrushing panel, the soft airbrush. Let's just use a, a darker black color here. And then I like to reduce the opacity of this too, because uh, I just like to slowly build up the color. And I do a darker shadow at each side of where it enters and exits the fabric. Actually, that might be even a little too dark. And then, So then to get that bump, I'm going to just slightly, I'm using like the lightest pressure here to add a little bit of a shadow on each side. And then you can either add a drop shadow the way that Abby did, um, where she duplicates the layer or since I'm already on the soft brush, I'll just go in and add a little bit of a shadow with this. That's a time saver. That's such a good idea. I love it with the yeah. clipping, I mean, layer mask. Yeah, and then change it to multiply. And I also like to, I don't know if this is actually visible, but I like to add a little bit of a highlight as well. So like on a new layer, I change the blend mode to overlay and just the tiniest, tiniest little bit of highlight there. That's really cool. Fuzz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think I forgot, I need to, yeah, reduce the opacity. Maybe I'll do linear for color burn. Color burn. Yeah. Yeah, the brush that Addie's used for the texture of fuzz is another fur brush, but you can do the exact same technique to um, create the 3D effect. Yeah, I think when I did this, um, the only technique that changed was that I used shorter brush strokes because the pile of the fur is, is yeah. shorter as well. Yeah. And so when I, if I unclip this, you can see all of these hairs are, I don't know, probably half or a quarter of the length of the other fur texture. They're very short. Oh my gosh. How cool does it look with the, just the shadows? That does look cool. It's embossed. <laughs> That this is, is like a, a bonus cool. tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> that is really cool. Um, or like, I wonder if you could invert it or like shift it to make it look like letterpress too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's very that cool. That is very cool. Oh. Oh, I have to clip all of these. That's right. There we go. Um, the other things that I wanted to show was um, adding stitching on top, especially if you're doing something that has like a less of a pile texture. So it's maybe not one of the fur ones. You can add mm -hmm. the stitching. And actually, if you want to pull up yours, Abby, you have a really cool mm -hmm. example with um, 
the the letter is puffed and then the stitching is lower. Oh, you know yes. what I'm talking about? I'll give you a second uh, to pull that up before switching over. But um, these are all different brushes within the set. So there's this thread brush that I used to draw the loose thread. The stitching brush is separate. The needle comes with it. And then all of the pins um, yeah, all, all come together and they just, they all mesh really well together. Yeah, like so I it's... loved that the um <laughs> sorry this is going to be really nerdy but the like twist of the single thread is the same sort of twist pattern as the stitching things like that it's those like minor details that Abby's brushes always catch you know Yeah so with this one I did the stitching around the edge and then the highlight and shadow actually put slightly in from the edge so that it looks like the edge is flat down and then the um, middle puffs up. So I love that. the way that I did that was actually super easy. I had this um, font. Let, let me show you here. Let's just go to a couple of layers above. Uh, this is the size that I did the letters and then the actual font was a little bit smaller this is this is the size whoops let's put the actual font up there this is the size of what the font actually looks like it's not rounded and oh, okay. it's um it's sort of pointy so what I did was because sewn things don't look pointy I um uh, let's turn that off. Just hide it. Um, I selected it and I filled a layer with it. And then I made two thicknesses of the letters by doing this. Duplicated it. The top one will turn off and I did Gaussian blur and I went to like that much mm -hmm. and then if you go and do automatic select you can select outside and you'll see that it leaves you with that roundy look to it yeah. don't forget to do the bits that you like that and then invert and fill and then for the one that I wanted a little bit thinner I just um, Gaussian blurred it a little bit less. So maybe did it to about there. And then maybe I did it even less than that. Yeah, let's go again. Gaussian blur, let's do five. There we go and invert it. Let's fill this with a different color so I can see it above the other one. So there you can see there's now a border around the edge. I think when I did it, I did it more dramatically different. But yeah, um, I'm curious, the idea is there. Close, the yep. uh, outside the edge, edge is, of... It's super oh, it pixely. Smooth. No, it's smoother it's than I expected. Pixely. But it, I think once you start doing things like putting stitching over the top, it doesn't matter that much. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, so this is just your template for the two shapes that you've got. So, whoops, here I had that one. And then the one on the inside was a little bit thinner than that. And that's how yeah. I did the puffy. Um, Puff, puffy applique. Yeah, puffy applique. I'll yeah. show you other ones that I've done. So this one is with the shaggy Ooh. thing that we did on the S. This is fun yeah. to see the combinations of font and texture that you chose. Yeah. I like, I like the choices. I like the really thin one on the shaggy. And then this is great because the, the letters are pretty simple. So it makes sense to have a more complicated yeah. fur texture. Um, and these are all just patterns that I've been making like a lunatic. Um, <laughs> this one is the, the carpety one. 
hopefully a um, maybe a, a brush set coming soon with patterns i hope so it the part that always trips me up is the part where you've got to suddenly make all the images make the pdf yeah and the city <laughs> and making the brushes is like oh this is fun so oh well, and, and it yep the the testing of them and tweaking so much of it is based in just making art and you don't yeah, have to exactly exactly pull it all together yet it is i agree the best part of the process so with this knitted lettering i made the edges a little bit bumpy to conform with the stitches <gasps> of the knit so i yeah. did a very similar thing to what i did in the other ones that i showed you the um it, yes yeah it kind of yeah. looks like you oh if you go back yeah. um it kind of looks like you used more blur on the highlight and less on the shadow. Is yeah, that I think I think that's exactly what I did. Yeah, I yeah. really like the effect that that gives too. It kind of gives you a better idea of the height of the letter, which is cool. Yeah, um, you've seen that one. There's another hairy one. This one is done with the same brush that Addie used for her hairy one. <laughs> uh, this one I just left flat, like it was a flat applique. And I did yeah. the zigzag around the edge. Oh, this is a leather texture that's also Ooh. in the pack. And this one I just did with a rounded edge and the stitching over the top. Yeah. And I think I love that we, we get this preview of all of your patterns too. <laughs> oh, and then I did this one that Addie said you can't <laughs> use as the cover of your <laughs> video. Yeah, <laughs> I always, whenever I'm doing a live or anything, I always do a whole lot of things in preparation, and then I name the set and stack it all together with the name on the top. So I've got yeah. lots of stack called Addy. <laughs> <laughs> I like that idea though of making a cover image for a stack because when yeah. you're scrolling through, it's it's hard to know what is in one necessarily. Yeah, I'll often leave like a halfway finished canvas open or yeah it's too as, small as to the tell. top one yeah exactly yeah oh let me show you something just one last thing before we um close up um so uh let's just write one letter and make it big so um the way to make something look like it's got a, a bull nose or like a rounded lip instead of just being flat or square is mm -hmm. to make that front leading highlight slightly in from the edge. So what you want to do is you actually want to do that clipping mask thing again that we did before. Do the black at the bottom and the white at the top, but you do it a tiny bit differently. So you select and remove. And then now this time we're not going to Gaussian blur the white one first. We'll do the black one. Okay. But with the white one, you want to pull it in first. So pull it in so that it is in from the edge okay and then you actually want to get rid of all the white that you can't see that's hidden by the clipping mask so you select your letter and invert the selection and then go there and clear it so now the only thing that's on that layer is that thin little white rim yeah and then to make to make that highlight stay on the letter you select the letter and then Gaussian blur it. And you can see, okay, this one, hang on, let's just move that one that way a tiny bit. So this one we're going to do linear burn. And this one that we're making the bull nose overlay. And you can see how different that looks. That looks like a little bubbly rounded shape. 
by itself. Yeah. And now that you can is, do your drop shadow. That is so clever. Um, the I'm trying to understand the difference in effect of just the sliver. Yeah. Versus... So let's so let's uh, turn this off, and we'll do it with just the other way. Okay. So it looks like a little bubble shape, but this one looks much more 3D. Okay, I see. So you get more. Yeah, of you the get shape more. Letter. You get more elevation in your yeah. roundedness of the shape. Yeah, that is a substantial this, difference. This looks like maybe paint has dripped and formed a little. Uh, you know, single layer. But this looks like you've actually sort of made it out of, I don't know, polymer clay and squidged it flat. Yeah, it's so cool. It also reminds me of those puffy sense. stickers. Oh, yes. I like yes. those. Like those. Yeah. Anyway, so Amazing. I just thought I'd show you. And yeah, so Diane says, so much great info. My head is spinning, and <laughs> mine definitely is too, <laughs> as I'm trying to articulate my question. <laughs> yeah, well, that's amazing. Thank you so much for all of the information and um, all of the techniques. I feel like we got like three bonus tutorials in there. Does anyone have any questions? Did I, I go too fast anywhere or? Let us know while we're still here if you have questions. I think I got all of them along the way. Oh, I see one at the beginning. Um, well, Diane says she loves how you put headers in your brush sets, Abby, which is especially for those bigger ones. Yeah. Like the, the whip stitch craft kit comes with so yeah. many brushes, helps organize for sure. Um, and then, let's see, I think I got everything else. Cool. Yeah, thank you everybody for joining us. And if if you have any additional questions, let us know in the comments below. Be sure to check out the free brush set that Abby provided. That's linked in the description, as is the font that she used in the demonstration and the link where you can purchase the Whip Stitch Craft Kit. Yeah. Thanks oh, for joining wait, us, guys. Wait, yep. I have, oh, <laughs> Cupcake Cottage asked one more. It slipped in at the end there. I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around the part where you drag the black and white layers off the canvas. So I know I just said oh, goodbye, but <laughs> you, can, just can we to back eliminate and... them, all I'm doing, all I'm doing is just taking that little patch that I've selected and taking it off. So essentially, you could select and erase or you could select and delete, or you can just select both at the same time and whip them off because it's a time saver. Yeah, what you what you want your end result to be is to have a perfect cutout, like a puzzle yeah. piece, the letter fits in where the black and white are. Yes. So however you get to that point, um, and then you won't be able, maybe it's, I feel like there is a bit of confusion as you're doing it because you, once you remove that, you don't see the black and white because they're yeah. clipping masks yeah. until yes, you blur exactly. it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's really well explained. Yeah. I hope that that clears it up. Cool. All right. <laughs> A second goodbye. Thank you guys so much for joining us and we will yeah. see you next time. And Bye. thank you, Addie, for having us. Oh, of course. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>